All right, hello guys, Elder Boucher bringing you another video. Uh, today I'm starting a Let's Play of Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, which uh, came out for the Nintendo GameCube back in 2002, and is honestly one of my favorite video games of all time. So uh, let's get started. It's, uh, it's a horror game. Got a little bit of that Resident Evil vibe. There's puzzle solving. Kind of has the tank controls, the but it's a solid game. I enjoy the hell out of it, and I'm looking forward to playing it again so for the first ago. time in... Before time. Before Damn, I'm old, like 15 years. I am Dr. Edward Roybus. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also dead. This is not my story, nor even the story of the Roybus family. It is the story of humanity. Like it or not, believe it or not, as you will. Your perceptions will not change reality, but simply color it. Humanity has been on the edge of extinction for two millennia. Ignorant of so much, and dependent on so few. The Guardians grow restless. Their time once again near. Whether by fate or misfortune, my family has crossed their path, and they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, for she is the last of my line, and the last hope for humanity. I don't know why the main uh, character in this game always reminded me a little bit of uh, Buffy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Holy crap, it's pretty dark. And I really cranked the, uh, the volume up on this. So yeah, we got our shotgun. We're blasting some zombies. Skeleton zombie monsters. Whatever you want to call them. Uh, the part of their body that's highlighting is the part that I'm aiming at. Oh, and that's the end of that little dream sequence. Yeah, I'll adjust the brightness further if I have to. I thought I did a decent enough uh, job earlier, but... Hello? Miss Alexandra Roybus? Um, yeah, who's this? This is Inspector Legras of the Rhode Island Police. I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's been an accident with your grandfather. I'll be on the next flight out. God, that's a shitty looking car. <laughs> Now again, guys, when I say a game's good, I don't mean the graphics, I mean it's fun to play and the story's engaging. Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. Yes, it is. Can we get this over with, please? Of course. I feel like this guy's hitting this on me. But I must warn you, it's not a pleasant sight. I'm afraid there's not much to see. I wouldn't call that not much to see. Miss Roybus, is that your grandfather, Edward? Yeah, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Can't you check dental records or something? What's wrong with you? I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. No, none of this makes sense. There's no sign of intrusion, and there was certainly a lot of force used here. I have never seen anything like this in my 20 years on the force. We have no evidence except for the body, and what's left doesn't say much. Ugh, we don't have a single clue. Well, you better find out who did this. I'm not leaving Rhode Island until you do. 
There must be some clue in this old mansion revealing what happened. I want answers. So do I. I wish I had some. Shocked by her grandfather's mysterious death and frustrated at the incompetence of the local police, Alex vows to uncover the truth. She decides to search the mansion, uh, the place where Edward conducted his research. If there was a tie to his past and possibly a tie to his murder, it would it would be here. Yeah, that's a little that's a little too dark. Uh, use this function allows you to manipulate inventory. Equip, check, Ba-ba. let's uh make our way over to options brightness see I had the brightness up what I felt was pretty high before uh, oh. there we go it's a little fuzzy but whatever uh, oh details on the clock it's a beautiful Whoa, wait sorry a beautiful carriage clock the hands appear to be stuck yet the clock continues to tick with the time permanently set to 333 there is a key in the back of the clock, presumably for winding it. Uh, should Alex look at the key? Yes. Alex picks up the key from the dresser clock and pulls the key for. Uh, sorry, picks up the dress clock. Uh, the Jesus picks up the desk clock and pulls the key from it. Sorry, guys, this is what I get for recording at like 11 o'clock at night. However, there is something odd about the key. It isn't for winding it at all. It looks like a dresser key. Alex found the dresser key. I'll try to read slower. Oops, didn't mean to attack there. How do you sprint in this game again? Do you... Ah, there we go. Hold down left trigger. That explains it. Uh, what else were we able to examine? Detail. Portraits of the ancestral Roivis line... Uh, sorry. Uh, portraits of the ancestral, ancestral Roivis line the foyer walls. Their faces reveal a dark, brooding edge. There is something about each one that gives the viewer an unsettling feeling. Nope. Didn't want to keep examining that. I don't think there's anything to do in here quite yet. Nope. Yeah, that's what I mean by Resident Evil-like vibes, if you guys have ever played that. A wooden plaque is fastened to the door, taking the place of a lock. A colored sigil is carved into the wood above the wide slot. The slot is just wide enough to insert a narrow blade. Let's see if I remember exactly what we're doing here. I don't think we have to go that way yet. If we come down here. I'm sure I'm annoying some people by not looking at every little thing, but whatever. Oh yeah, nothing to look at there yet, huh? Um, this looming grandfather clock seems to stand ominously in the corner, gazing on this empty room with an almost patriarchal air. Use the stick to adjust the clock's hands, should Alex adjust the clock? Yes. And let's set it to... Oh, yeah. Three... Thirty... Because that's what the other clock was stuck at. <clears throat> Boom. Set that to three thirty-three... We find his secret study. Obviously by him I mean Edward. What have we got here? Whoa. Details. An ancient Roman weapon, a gladius, is on display above the fireplace mantle. Another token of eccentric junk. Let's pick it up. Yeah, now we got a sword. Okay. And let's examine the book. A large leather-bound antique book rests upon the cluttered desk. Should Alex read the book? Yes. All right, now the real fun starts. See what I mean? I had no knowledge of what was to come, nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. As you read this, you will come to learn fear as I have. You too will come to understand, 
or you will perish. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of our reality. To see those who dwell behind. My life now has purpose, for I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I was once a fool. Just so you guys know how early into the GameCube's life this was, this was one of the, um, the like, premier launching games. So, like, when I was a kid, I had this, I had Luigi's Mansion, and I had, like, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on my GameCube uh, when I first got it. I was a kid when I was a kid. I would like to compliment you once more on your battle tactics. Our enemies did not have a chance. Do you believe that it really exists, Centurion? I do not doubt our Emperor's beliefs, or his orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. I'm going to give Pius the benefit of the doubt here that he's not an absolute idiot, just that he still, you know, he's around in a time where believing that the gods were real and that they could talk to you was common practice. So, not going to call him an idiot for following a random voice into what is clearly some kind of, like, portal, shrine, gateway, whatever you want to call it. go time. Uh, I don't think there's anything in this first room to look at. So let's just go down the ladder. I probably should have read that. Sorry, I'll try to make sure I read things for you guys as they come up. Examine. Oh yeah, he's just looking at the course. So nothing to read there. Hey look, a red block. Yeah, sadly, the dead aren't quite dead in this place. Whoa. Dangerous. Alright, let's, uh... Take your head off. Take your head off. And your arm, actually. Finish him. So yeah, I like the combat system in this game. I like that you can kind of choose where you want to cut on the body parts, or where on the body you want to cut. You can sever the body parts. Um, it's a lot of fun to have in this game with the mechanics. Strange granite block lies on the floor. Pick it up. Boom. Let's go on to the next area. Oh shit, what is around it? That was almost that one almost hit me. Nope, I want to attack the arm. Oh well, whatever. Uh, sure, let's pick up the green granite block. And let's just finish these two off so they don't get back up again. I don't think they actually do that, but better safe than sorry. And let's just run up through this door. Whoa! Right behind me, eh? Oh, fuck you. Lose an arm for that. Damn. Ugh. Ooh. Ooh, Got it. Damn, there's a lot of you in this room. Oh, That's not good. I got cornered. 
The health meter represents the life energy. Every time the character takes damage, the level will get lower. When it reaches zero, the character will die. Good to know. You know what, though? Pius is a tough guy. He can fight his way out of this. See what I mean? No problems here. these guys off. And I believe we just go down here. Nope, hit him in the head. There we go. Just gotta get the uh, the pattern down a little bit better. Uh, chopping off their head, and then their arms, and then they're useless. They can't do anything to you. That's the same sigil that was in, uh, what's his face? Okay, this wall is primarily decorated with a strange line symbol carved into the granite. Cut into the wall is a square hole lined with scratches as though something has been removed from it. Uh, oh yeah, do I have to go into my inventory and use it? Yeah. I figured I was close enough to use the blue one. So sadly, there's no way to choose a which one you want to target. You just kind of have to hope that when you hold down the right trigger, he locks onto the guy you're looking at. Then you hold in a direction, hope it highlights the body part you want, and then you can hack away. Bam. And that's those guys down. Oh, right. I don't have to examine it. I have to use the item. Perfect. Um. That door's unlocked. Let's head back. Pius, you must prove your worth by destroying this statue. Pressing R will enable the... Da, da, da. Yes. Cool. So, we basically just have to destroy this statue the same way I've been trying to destroy all the zombies. So, that was an easy little puzzle. Attached to a small pylon softly illuminates the room. Bizarre energy seems to radiate from it. Should you push the button? Of course. Is there any 
anything else to do in this room? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, and now for the big decision in the game. Oh boy. Um, so just so you guys know, this is pretty much where we are choosing our difficulty. Um, and you know what, for the sake of this playthrough, just because it'll be the most fun, I think we should take green. An effigy resembling a warped angel shaped from dark green emerald hovers effort effortlessly above the pedestal. Should Pius claim this artifact? Yes. So, what happens there is there are three artifacts. If you take the red one, the enemies um, basically damage your health whenever they look at you. If you take the blue one, the enemies damage your magic whenever they look at you. And if you take the green one, they damage your sanity. Now, obviously, the green one is considered easy mode because it can't kill you, it can't harm you, it doesn't limit the amount of magic you can cast, it doesn't, doesn't do anything to you. But the sanity effects in this game are some of the most fun parts. And that's why we're going with sanity. I don't know if I'm going to do three playthroughs of this. I doubt it. I'll probably just do one and then maybe show each ending from the other. As a child, but now my mind is sharp. With the power of Zelotar, I can now read the thoughts of others and make them raving mad with a mere suggestion. Face me. Yeah, so we've given uh, Pius Augustus that ability that he was just raving about. And um, given that Pius is one of the central antagonists of the game, that's why that decision chooses your difficulty for you. And now that we have the Tome of Eternal Darkness, we get to start looking for these things. Uh, strangely, with the Tome of Eternal Darkness in her pos possession, Alex can read the page. It is the chapter page from the Tome itself. Should Alex take the chapter page? Alex has found a chapter page entitled The Binding of the Corpse God. So with that, we can come back and uh, I believe, are we able to do it right now? Edward Roybus, filled with knickknacks. Yeah, okay, that's his stuff. Um, how do you do this? You use? Right, you go into the study, the you use the, uh, the chapter sure page, end. and she so begins to read the next the part of the Tome of Eternal Darkness. I am reminded of ideas I first encountered in Sir James George Fraser's book, The Golden Bough, a study in magic and religion. We're I just don't want to talk over the game too much here. We need to weave a web of meaning where there may be none. Since time immemorial, ancient peoples have dressed up their lack of knowledge as gods and demons. I have discovered that sometimes the fates of gods and mortals intertwine and legends are born. And so with each new chapter page we find in the mansion as Alex, we get a new character to play as. Um, obviously Pius is, is a really short chapter. It's just kind of a little introductory chapter, more or less the tutorial. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe this girl's is pretty hard. Of all things, that you now must be entombed amongst the, the beings of flesh and bone. bone. You have a great monument here, Mount Rock. It is a pity that no one will ever recognize it as yours. May the darkness claim thee, fallen chaos and damn beast. No longer would thy reign be over the ancients you have kept imprisoned thou hast seen the last of this world
Yeah, so if I'm getting my lore right for this game, I believe that was the purple one who is the enemy of the other three colored ones. Which uh, is why there wasn't a purple artifact to choose from. There was only the red, blue, and green, because those were the three ancients that the purple one tried to keep out of our world. Um, but yeah, we'll get to more of the lore later as we play through the game. And uh, I guess I'll just end this one here. It seems like a good time to do so. So I hope you guys enjoyed that first episode, and we will pick up on Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem.